Star Trek fans, and welcome to my review of Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. So, after the major disappointment of uh, the fifth one, uh, the filmmakers and the cast felt they had to rectify all the mistakes made in the previous film. In other words, pretty much the whole film. So, they decided to do one more, one final swan song to basically end the film run of the original crew. This will be the last, this is the last film to feature all the original crew. Um, and basically retcons the fifth one as, well, irrelevant in terms of this non-canon. Well, it is canon, but it's not, it doesn't link to any of the other films. So, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, the basic plot is that the crew of the US to Enterprise are carrying a Klingon Chancellor to Earth because they want to negotiate a kind of peace treaty but um, Kirk is very much uneasy about this as um, we know that the Klingons were responsible for the death of his son in um, Star Trek 3 um, and then basically the Enterprise is framed for killing the Chancellor, and then Kirk and Bones, McCoy, they are arrested and taken to this sort of underground mine, um, where they sort of become slaves, and then they have to be, they have to try and escape, um, Spock assumes command of the ship, and then they have to try and carry out their negotiations. Um, it's kind of about establishing peace within their um, society, essentially. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it for Star Trek VI. So, <clears throat> Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Now, this is a really good film. <laughs> I think this is definitely a major revival after the very disappointing fifth entry into the series. Um, Star Trek VI definitely brings the charm back, and they bring Nicholas Meyer back to direct, which I think helps. Um, you're able to capture the, the kind of the magic and the wonder of Star Trek, because that, has, that was lost in uh, the fifth one, and to an extent the third one, but not majorly. Um, I really like the story here. It's very much political, but I think it works. It's um, it's it's kind of it's a nice resolution. It's a nice resolution for the original crew, and uh, I mean they used the Klingons again, but this time they used much better. Uh, and this is probably so far out of the films I've seen their standout appearance. Um, <clears throat> and I like the tension between. You know, the humans and the Klingons, well, the, the Starfleet and the Klingons, um, especially with Kirk, because he's still angry at the death of his son, you know, he's, and there's a moment when he says, oh, let them die, you know, he couldn't give a fuck what happens to the Klingons, but, um, so it's nice to see that ongoing tension from there, so it's like, continuing almost after where Star Trek 3 left off, <laughs> essentially. Um... We have lots of political stuff, but unlike the Star Wars prequels, it actually works <laughs> here. Um, as I said, there's constant tension, and um, you really do. This one, I believe, is where you really feel the team at its strongest. I mean, Sulu is kind of on his own. He's got his own ship. He's off. He does occasionally drop in to help, but he's not on the Enterprise anymore. He's got his own ship. Um, even that being said, you can still feel there's a nice camaraderie between the team. More so than the fifth one. The fifth one did have some camaraderie, but it was more contained within uh, Kirk, McCoy and Spock. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about performances. The acting is fantastic, for the most part. Um, William Shatner gives a good, solid performance. Um, you've also got Len Nimoy, who is fantastic as Spock. He's just... Amazing, as Spock. Um, I love his line at the end. Like, if I were human, I would say, "Go to hell." Like, 
that's just great. It's just great that he's finally opened up. Spock as a character has finally opened up to something so much more. Um, you have Scotty and Uhura, they're great, and luckily Uhura's not doing her weird dance again. Oh, God. Um, you've got Chekhov, he's good as well. Um, I mean, they're all obviously quite older by this point, but. Um, yeah, it works. Um, this film was released in 1991, and you can tell like the effects have very much improved uh, since the earlier films. Even though now it does look dated, it being like over 20 years old, but even so, it's still uh, <laughs> it's still it's still good to look at for the, for the time, I suppose, and it's good to admire. I mean, there's a section where these two. Uh, crew members dress up, dress up in like these white astronaut suits and start shooting the Klingons and um, the blood is purple and you can really tell the CGI there <laughs> it's, but it's kind of funny because of that like oh it's that's quite cute look how dated it is um, one of the sections I really liked was the sections with the underground mines I thought they were really good it was um, much different to anything that we'd ever seen in a Star Trek film before um, and the whole plot with um, Kirk being framed for murder as well, it, it works really well and it's an interesting story dynamic putting Kirk in that situation where he pretty much has nothing apart from Bones, you know, <laughs> him and Bones are pretty much helpless. Um, you have that weird character who's kind of the shapeshifter woman, I can't remember her name, um, and then she kind of betrays them, I don't didn't really get that, to be honest, but it wasn't bothersome to me at all. Uh, the direction's great by Nicholas Meyer. He definitely, as I said, he injects more of the charm back that we that we uh, that we liked from the earlier films. <clears throat> but he takes it one step further. He gives this one epic scope. <clears throat> There's some good action sequences here, and the finale is epic. There are some epic scenes here. Um, and it's, it's really, really well done, and you really actually feel <coughs> the weight of, well, the emotional weight of this. Um, you really don't want the team to die, um, because it's, it's the last one, it's the last hurrah, so there's, you know, the stakes are high, and I like that, I like that very much. Um, the ending is very nice, it's bittersweet, you know, you have Kirk um, explaining about, you know, you know, basically they're told to come back and because they're going to be decommissioned. But Kirk's like, "Fuck it, you know, let's go." You know, second start of the right straight until morning. It's a Pete's Pan reference, but it's but it's appropriately placed. I think it's quite nice. Um, uh, the music is good. I don't think the music is fantastic, but it is good and it fits the film. Um, the scene when Spock mind melds with the lieutenant. That's that's quite interesting. That's that's really well done. Um, you know, that's that's really tense. You know, that's a really good scene when they all discover she's the one that betrayed them. <laughs> um, the pacing is good. It, it there's a couple of slow scenes, but it's not bothersome as I've said. Um, overall, the pacing is more or less fine. You know, and it moves along. Uh, it romps along, and it's fantastic. And there's some nice emotional moments between the team. Um, it's way better than the fifth movie, which really just sagged for me. Um, yeah, I, I don't have much to say. Um, well, I suppose the prosthetics are really good as well. Like the, they brought the Klingons back, and they all the practical effects all look absolutely fantastic. Like all the aliens look really cool. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, and. And this film has a real heart to it as well, and the story's quite dramatic as well. I don't think it's quite as dramatic as The Wrath of Khan, but it's definitely got its moments. And uh, I really liked it. I think it's definitely one of the best Star Trek films um, that I watched, so I was I found myself really entertained. Um, there's not much else I can say. Um, there's a really interesting meeting scene where um, they're drinking like Romulan like ale or something but it looks like WKD <laughs> it just does um, 
Yeah, um, overall, I really like this film. I think it's uh, a fantastic wrap-up to the original crew. Uh, and I'm going to give Star Trek The Undiscovered Country a 9 out of 10. pretty much all I've got to say about The Undiscovered Country. I'm sorry this has been quite a brief review, but I didn't really have much to say. Um, so that's it. That's the end of the original crew. And um, I want to say I'm, I'm really glad I watched these films. I mean, you grow to love these characters over the six films, and it's a shame to sort of um, see it come to an end. But um, we move on to the next generation saga with Star Trek Generations that will be my next review um, but yeah I wanted to thank um, The Watcher or Jack McCullough for introducing me to Star Trek, well the original films and uh, you know yeah, yeah because without him I wouldn't have been as interested in these as you know if he hadn't given me some information about it so thank you so yeah, um, that's all for now folks, tune in next time when I review Star Trek 7 Generations, where we see new the new uh, crew come into place. So yes, that's all going to be good fun fun fun, but goodbye for now folks, thank you all for watching, I'm Mr. Thomas 11 see ya. <laughs>